Stone Age through Bronze Age, iron and steel, it's got a good heft, it's got a good feel. So if someone armored gets in your face, don't worry, just go and show them your mace. friends lauren back with a video about the mace harper from chaotic creations podcast wanted me to talk about the mace and i'm making this video uh, remember if you want me to look at a particular area of medievalism um particularly for arms and armor you can leave a comment you can send me a message let me know and um i'll be happy to try and do a video based on what you're interested in that's what makes the channel go round. but we're gonna talk about the mace and as a weapon, the mace, 10,000 years old, maybe older, definitely late Stone Age idea of taking either stone and flint, embedding them into a, the shaft of a club, or mm, having a stick and having a round ball hollowed out and then attached and secured to the club and turning it into an extra heavy weapon. And that's what we call the mace. comes from the French word mass meaning the mass on the end of a stick <laughs> um so yeah it's a mass on the end of a stick this is a late 15th century design maces were used into the 16th century and uh, if we even look at indo-persian so in india maces can they definitely carry on so it's not just a medieval weapon it goes well before the medieval period and even after the medieval period so the mace is one of these old old ideas and um, with our 15th century we have a flanged mace there are eight flanges on on here some could only be six maybe you only needed four but it's the physics of the mace that make it so effective and what it's effective at is crunching armor delivering an impact through there now if we look at earlier in the middle ages we will <clears throat> see different designs i mean eventually it's going to start with uh studs and spikes on a wooden shaft uh then we're going to have solid forged heads uh, but the bronze age and early iron age we have round masses put onto the end of a wooden shaft so the maces is definitely hung up this transition and in the medieval period they were kind of carved a little bit ornate they could have faces on it um rope patterns there are a lot of different things we see them out in eastern europe a lot byzantine uh the rus people maces used all over the place and if you have armor a mace is good at delivering the impact through maybe breaking some bones if we're looking at male armor and you're wearing padding underneath that you have your gambeson underneath because something like an impact weapon a mace even an axe has a lot of impact to it going to deliver that energy through you're trying to cushion that blow but as we get to the late middle ages with these flanges medieval people understand physics they don't understand the physics the way we do today they couldn't build a rocket and send it to the moon or anything but they understand that if you put a point on this flange as you swing the energy is going to be sent down to this point and maximum energy at the smallest point of contact really delivers a good crunch into that armor so this become it's always been kind of an anti-armor weapon but it particularly becomes that uh, in the middle late middle ages we have a lot of plate armor and if you're in a fight you need a way to crunch and dent and compact that armor because you want your opponent to be less mobile and if your opponent is less mobile then you can overcome them throw them to the ground get up the dagger stab them all of the things that we mentioned in the Rondel Dagger video when we were talking about fighting, that all comes into play. So the mace, really good for that, it's putting all that energy, and when we have eight flanges, it doesn't matter which way you turn it or hold it, that impact is getting into the target. Is it hitting with two points, one point? But it's crunching that armor, maybe it's dealing damage and breaking bones underneath. It's very effective. Now, we don't have a manual to tell us how to use a mace specifically. So in all of our fight manuals, there's not one on mace, but we can extrapolate a little bit. We do have club. Club and long shield in some 15th century manuals, Talhofer, um, Paulus Call, they have long shield with, and it's a wooden club, but it flares out and it looks a lot like a mace at the end of the club coming to points, with the point on top. And 
most of the manuals, we can see that the club is usually held in an upper position. So we know that this is not a finesse weapon. This is, you know, a strength weapon. You really are swinging it. You really are coming over. I'm trying not to hit the camera. I should move back a little bit more. So if I have it up, I have a shield, I am coming through with all that energy. A few drawings where it's down low, you could swing upward, but this is really meant to attack head, shoulders, arms, really slam in, break bones, crunch armor, and get someone out of the fight. So that's the role of the mace, as far as where we see it in the middle, medieval period. We know that it is used thousands upon thousands of years before that. We know it continues use after that. Now it's a ceremonial thing, you know, the mace of parliament in many countries. But in pop culture, the mace is also the cleric weapon. So in your video games and role-playing games and things like that, you have the mace as a bloodless weapon, which if the person isn't wearing armor and you hit them with the mace, there's going to be blood. Okay, especially if you hit them in the head. You're going to you're gonna break the skin. There's going to be bleeding. But this all comes back to the idea of um, the Norman invasion of England in 1066. And from that we get the Bio Tapestry. And on there we have Bishop Odo fighting with the Normans and he has a giant club that he's fighting with. And this is whole, he's not drawing blood, he's not using a warrior weapon, but he's still participating and knocking people out. So that's this whole idea of the cleric using, you know, these weapons that aren't going to draw blood, that aren't traditional weapons. But we see these weapons used by knights anyway, because they are crunching into armor. So his use of the club transfers into this idea that maces and warhammers and um, the staff and other things that are not cutting surfaces, not slashing, not piercing type weapons, are clerical in nature. But yeah, they're going to break bones, they're going to damage organs, they are still going to draw some blood. Interesting side note. <clears throat> The bio tapestry. It's neither a tapestry nor made in bio. Discuss. I've been waiting to do that. <laughs> um, the bio tapestry is an embroidery. So you take your blank sheet of cloth and then you embroider all of the scenes on it. And it's made in England and then sent to bio France, which is where Bishop Odo was from. So that's how it ties all back into that. So yeah, interesting fact. Bio tapestry, not a tapestry, not actually made in bio, just stored there and on display and it's really big and it really does tell a big long detailed story you can imagine the work that went into it and we're only connecting it because it shows bishop odo with his giant war club in the battle so that's a quick look at the medieval mace because harper wanted that so there we go we did a video and uh remember friends like subscribe notification bell i mean i'm trying to do two videos a week right now you don't want to miss them so subscribing it's to show up on your feed notification bell will let you know when there's one that's been posted and um thank you very much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this little bit of background on the mason and i hope you have a fantastic day